at full forward. Rockcliffe, gee, that was strong by Rockcliffe. That is a terrific goal. Fantasia or Fantasia? Romy Arasio. Arasio Fantasia! I wonder how far we've got to go back to see when time on was allowed for a pig on the ground. Well, welcome back to Rock the Rasbar episode six. Very exciting news around the football club today. I'm joined by my co-hosts and now I'm getting a little bit excited because there's a few murmurs around about you on the training track. We'll get to that in the second segment, but welcome back, Arazio Fantasia. Thank you, Rock. How are you, mate? Good week? Yeah, not a bad week. A- another win for the for the boys, which was uh, very exciting. And yep. unfortunately, we went down here Saturday afternoon, the Magpies. But uh, we're having a lot of wins off the field, particularly in the AFLW space. So we welcome Gemma Houghton to the... Uh, podcast today. Congratulations on signing yesterday. Thank you. She'll join Port Adelaide, the latest AFLW signing after six seasons starring at Fremantle, where she was named All-Australian twice, Orazio. Have you been named All-Australian? No chance. I've got to play to be an All-Australian, mate. Can't have a drink with us. (laughs) Yeah. Because we're a couple of All-Australians here. I might leave. Very strong Indigenous background as well. well. We'll touch on that a little bit later. I'm also excited by the last point there that she works as a personal trainer away from the football football field so i've put on a few so i might need uh, <laughs> help some out. help there but Gemma, very excited to have you um on the show and and at port adelaide footy club yeah thank you for having me it's been um a pretty intense 24 hours but um i feel so supported by the club and i'm really excited to be here it's good now why did you choose port adelaide you could have stayed at home you're a western australian girl but you supported port adelaide growing up i'm led to believe erin phillips strong ties but why port adelaide yeah so um i did grew up supporting Port Adelaide as well um <clears throat> obviously for reasons uh, obviously football as well but um yeah absolutely love the the teal color and was a huge Chad Wingard supporter so um at a young age that caught my attention yep. um and yeah just loved the club and loved their success and just really uh, you know happy to be on board with yeah. you guys nice always footy or what were you doing a bit of basketball we've had a few sort of you know rock <laughs> likes to say you played a little bit but Robbie Gray and obviously Aaron you, you played a little bit of basketball is that right yeah so um I grew up basketball um bit of bit of track and field when I was younger but went to basketball um absolutely loved it but sort of lost a bit of passion and had an opportunity through Ebony Antonio to jump um I guess into the footy world yep very familiar with footy growing up my brother played he was also drafted with Frio so that was pretty cool when we were younger um so yeah just wanted to give it a crack and six years later still here nice still there kicking goals so uh very exciting career as we touched on for the people the for the Port Adelaide family that won't know you uh personally you've joined the football club your position is down forward you're a full forward or, or a tall forward Sorry, yeah, I was just celebrating because we love forwards here. <laughs> Your forwards position on the yeah. ground. <laughs> yeah, um, played traditionally a, a full forward, sort of half forward. I love to run up the ground, um, but also sit in the pocket and steal the goals. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get on like a house on fire, yeah. you and I. Have you played any other positions? Did you get up the bit of back or um, did you develop always? As a no, I didn't really like defence. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just working that out, I love that. Yeah, but um, played a bit of rock. And yep. um, scrap that. Yeah, you don't need that anymore. Just Before jumping forward. from basketball, sit, sort of. Yeah, but <laughs> but yeah, no, pr- prefer forward. Now I'm sure there was plenty of uh, people that were in the uh, proposal for you to come to Port Adelaide Footy Club. Who was the biggest driver behind that, and who really excites you to work with at Port Adelaide moving forward? Yeah, well, obviously Erin Phillips. Um, She's an an incredible player. She's um, got a huge legacy already in AFLW. So just to, you know, not be an opposition with her and now to play in the forward line alongside of her and learn from her, um, not just as a a footballer, but as an elite athlete, um, I think it's incredible to, you know, obviously have her and um, to be able to learn off her. Nice. We want to talk about your uh, Indigenous heritage and what that means to you. And obviously we're a a pretty big Indigenous club. Yeah, so um, obviously my dad's side of the family is Injibundi, which is Robem, yeah, um, Port Headland, and so um, yeah, absolutely love culture and love you know that identity of who you are. And I've worked a lot with young Indigenous kids in WA, and um, that o- also attracted me over here, you know, to work in the space of the community development here with Port, yep. and um, to work alongside the young Indigenous kids over here and just to be, I guess, a role model as well um, and to learn off them with their life experiences and hopefully yeah. help them along their journey. 
Now, talking about your Indigenous heritage, your nickname at Fremantle is Auntie. Do you want to yeah. delve into a little bit of that for us as well? Yeah, so um, all, all the girls I'm known as Auntie. Um, it's sort of just stuck as my nickname now. And um, yeah, I, I think I just sort of um, called them my bubs, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. controlling the forward line, which was pretty funny. So um, yeah, they were the bubs and I was the Auntie, a bit like a mother to them. <laughs> Do you like that sort of side of the game, though? Obviously, helping and, and teaching. And could you see yourself maybe going down coaching? I know that's probably a little early to say something like that, but do you really enjoy that side of the game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, maybe, I don't know about coaching, yep. um, but I guess um, in particular with young Indigenous kids, their talent um, and just their future is so bright. So to be able to help them, whether it's um, just giving them the confidence to believe in themselves and help them with anything and, and finding out who they are and staying staying true to that is something that I believe in. Yeah. Your ward number 27 at Fremantle, will that tradition continue at Port Adelaide? Are you going to request the 27 to be worn? Yeah, um, I think I'm going to have to. Um, Aaron did mention that if you pick whatever number you pick, you're sort of um, your buddies with the male yep. side, and unfortunately there was no 27, so I might be by myself. 13's available. <laughs> well, 13? <laughs> yeah, 13. Well, and forwards, we can All right. just say. Um, yeah, but I'll stick to 27. It's tattooed on me quite a bit, so I'm going to have to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of tattoos, what do, do they have significant meaning to you, all of them, or is there some that certainly mean more than others? And, and talk us through the, a little bit. You've got a lot of uh, tattoos down, down your arms there. Yeah, um, I do. So um, I guess... I'll start with um, the Indigenous side. So she's, through my mum's side, I've got American Indian heritage, so um, Cherokee Indian. So that's sort of um, what that symbolises. And then on her face, she's got some tribal tattoos from being Indigenous here. Um, My tattoos are actually really, really, really sentimental to me now. So obviously a big part of me wanting to get a fresh start and a new opportunity as well is I had a really close friend my best mate um July last year committed suicide so that was pretty full-on for me and he did all my tattoo work so now I get to step on the field and he's with me and the latest one here is um yeah is is from him so he actually got my first um tattoo as well so they're really special to me and they have a lot of meaning now Oh, sorry to, sorry to hear about that. That's oh, obviously that's very deep and meaningful yeah. for you and, and it's very special and that's um, a great tribute for you to, to be able to go out there and represent him week in, week out. And now we're lucky enough to have you in Port Adelaide Colours. I, I want to speak a little bit more about on field. You've played in the, the derbies over there in, in Perth. Have you heard much about the showdown? You, you supported Port Adelaide, so I'm sure you're over it a little bit. But we're, we're hearing that it may be Adelaide Oval round one in the week of the bye Prison bars potentially. It could be a huge game for Stop it. for the for the women. We're waiting for <laughs> yeah. the AFL to do a CBA, of course, as uh, we continue to wait for that. But that's what uh, a bit of the mail is. Does that excite you? Yeah, absolutely. It's really exciting. So, um, obviously, the the big rivalry is in WA is Fremantle versus West Coast, and um, I was fortunate enough to be a part of those derbies over there. And um, it's a different name over here. It's a showdown, um, which already sounds cool. Um, <laughs> You sort of expect show bags at a showdown, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be really exciting. You know that games are competitive anyway, but to add that, you know, that feeling of um, two rival teams going at it will be really cool. We can't talk too much about showdowns because Rock loves talking about oh. himself about the showdown, <laughs> so we can't. Had spend a pretty good record in showdowns. <laughs> too much time about that, but let's let's go on to your personal stuff, your personal training. You really enjoy that. How'd you get into that originally? And yeah, so um. I guess fitness for me has always been a big drive and I love my sport and I love what it does, not just um, on the physical sense, but I guess with mental health and how it really helps you. So um, I love to help other people with their fitness and obviously, um, yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yes, no, absolutely. (laughs) But um, yeah, so jumped on board with with the studying and um, I've been able to, you know, take that into, um, I guess, a, a lifestyle now. Beautiful. It's a great a holistic approach to um, the health and fitness space. Now, we've heard that you've had to, may have to buy a puppy uh, to convince a partner <laughs> to move over over this way. Um, do you want to talk us a little bit through that? Yeah. So um, I've actually wanted one for a while, um, and I just thought moving over here um, might get a bit sad being away from WA. So I said to my partner, "Can we please get a puppy?" <laughs> um, she said no. So oh, um, no. really, yeah. Yeah, because um, she said when we go back to Perth, who's going to have it? So 
just put it in the handbag. I don't know. Yeah. What do you do? You can take it back. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, I think you can yeah. take it on planes now, yeah. can't you? I think they've just yeah. passed that. You can start to take them on planes. So we've jumped that hurdle. She yeah. can't say no. Well, yeah. That. I think I think we might have to put a vote out and see. Yeah. Let's. What's your favourite dog? What do you? Well, what's your, what do you want? Just. I don't know. I've fallen in love with Groodles now. Have you? Yeah. Okay. They're like big little humans. <laughs> Well, he just got his, uh, what do you get, a, a Roddy? And I think Miles just got an Australian, the, lots of boys are getting dogs, so it's, I think we have to push this hard. Yes. Yeah. There is, there's plenty of uh, <laughs> dog new dogs on board. So uh, just talking about that, when do you plan to, to move over? Because um, it's all up in the air still a little bit with the pre-season dates. We know you've flown in, flown out today to, to make, or yesterday to make the announcement. So when do you intend to, to get over here? Yeah, um, hopefully within, you know, four to five weeks um would that that would sort of be in line with when the season is supposed to start um until the cba gets announced i'm i'm not sure um makes it tough yeah but yeah i mean i I love it here already so i'll be keen to get back whenever i can it's cold it gets cold here it's not the perth you don't get the beautiful perth winter you know that sort of sun no a little chilly so you don't uh, yeah no (laughs) it certainly gets very cold here i found that moving uh from brisbane but we won't hold you up any longer Gemma. we know you've got to get to the airport and get home so really appreciate you coming on and spending some time with me and orazio and it's great for the port adelaide family out there to get to know you a little bit more and and congratulations again for joining the port adelaide football club yes thank you guys for having me This place is different. It has a soul, a heartbeat. It gets into your senses. It's more than football. It's belonging. All right, Orazio, we're back now. Gemma had to get going. She had to get her flight home to yep. WA to pack her bags up and get over here. But let's get into the footy. Last weekend, Friday night footy, how good was it? Port Adelaide, again, winners three in a row now. Climbing the ladder slowly up to 11th, and I'm starting to hear that there's a few murmurs around that we might be starting to get some players back. <laughs> let's keep a lid on it. Let me just say how amazing and open and honest Gemma was. She was elite. But, yeah, back to the footy. Uh, well, Charlie... Played some footy on the weekend, which was really nice. And I trained fully again, which is Whoa. always nice. And I've been in Ken's ear just whispering, whispering that there's a game on this weekend. But we'll see how we go, Rock. So you're saying that you are available for <laughs> re- for a selection this week? I'm available to play. Unfortunately, there's no sample game, which has really hurt me. It's come at the wrong time, the, the state game. So there may be a potential to bring you straight in if the coaches <laughs> feel like you've done enough work. No, in yeah, all well, yeah. maybe, yeah. I, I mean... It's pretty rare. I think only the the real sort of stars, the Robbie Grays of the world, can sort of slide back in. It probably takes a little bit to get used to. So I'd like to think I, I could do it, definitely. I feel like I'm fit enough in terms of uh, the amount of work I've done. I've done probably a good six-week block here uh, of a pre-season, which has been really nice. So to be able to get that work in under my belt and feel good puts, I guess, my mind at ease to know that I could come in and play straight away if, that was the case. Just remind him that, just remind Ken that he didn't bring me straight back in. And I went out and had 57 in the sample. So just make him aware that you're available to come in and, and play. I might bring that up. And now I want to talk about the boys last weekend yeah. and probably over the last month. It feels like they've started to get the game plan black and mm. play that front half brand of footy that we've come to love and um, appreciate over the last three or four years about Port Adelaide. Just the number of inside 50s and, and it happened again on the weekend, which yeah. was really pleasing. Yeah, and I think that's probably what we really focus on rock and you're obviously not sitting in the meetings but you know footy that well that you you can see it from watching and that's really what we just want to i guess ingrain again and, and get that back in our game and really make sure that we do just lock it in there so our forwards you know we're putting lots of pressure on and our backs they're getting up and they're closing those exits so we can keep it in there now that's clearly evident in in the points that you've given up as well defensively it's yeah. number two one or two in the competition over the last five weeks um for scores again so it's a, a real game style shift and it's really good to see your boys getting back to the best so with you being available charlie we know he came back through the magpies they went down to the eagles uh 47 yeah. to 73 unfortunately on saturday afternoon it was scrappy trying conditions a bit wet, yeah uh, all reports where he was a little bit proppy, but he started to train this week. He'll have to get through training tomorrow, yep. put his name up for selection. We we go down to Hobart. We take on North Melbourne down there at 1.40 Adelaide time. Have you played down there before? 
Not in Hobart, no, yeah. but I've played at um, Launceston. So I have played in okay. Tasmania a couple of times. I'm actually heading down to Georgetown, do a bit of uh, a clinic on Thursday afternoon. <sighs> It's the Georgetown Footy Club. No, with GFG and Port Adelaide. So yeah. support the locals and yeah. it's important that we look after them. But yeah, I have had, I think, 45, 46 down there <laughs> in, in a game uh, down in Launceston. So long in, sleeves. Is it that sort of area? Is it going to be cold uh, like that or not? If you play, I, I would suggest, yeah, <laughs> take a long sleeve down just in case. Uh, we've spoken about the boys coming back from injuries. Mm. Unfortunately, Jake Pacini potentially went down with an ACL at yeah. training on Tuesday. Devastating news. It is, especially for for Jake. He's done a mountain of work to get. He's come off shoulder surgery twice. Like he's done a mountain of work to get his body back in such a good position. He's playing such good footy, you know. And he's essentially the next tall back in. You know, he's unfortunately Klaus and and Alia obviously playing so well and and are healthy. But if one of those goes down, he was right there putting the pressure on them. So sometimes footy can be cruel, Rock. I know you. You can probably agree with me on that one. Yeah, absolutely horrible at times. We've seen Sam Power Pepper play his 100th game last weekend, which was really exciting for him. I want to talk about the resurgence of the forward line. Todd Marshall, yep. how good he's been, he's been over the last three or four weeks, or pretty much after the first two or three weeks when yep. there was supporters, everyone calling yeah. for him to be dropped, but he's uh, he's responded really well. I think everyone's just now on George, now that he missed a few on the weekend. <laughs> just goes in circles but that's I mean all of the forwards and George yes he missed it from the weekend but they've been absolutely super when Bass and all of us really in the forward line just sort of put the pressure on them to not mark everything you don't need to mark everything as long as you're crashing the packs and bringing the ball to the front it's predictable for the forwards and it allows you know Sam Pepper oh, Sam Pepper <laughs> Sam Pal Pepper to get involved and and Robbie Gray to get involved on the ground and, and Connor Rosie and those sorts of guys where we put our pressure on and we can lock it in our half yeah it's a really interesting thing as well that forward line the way it works because we know that Charlie um, hasn't been there but he was there for a majority of the preseason so Jeremy Finlayson Toddy Charlie George yep. they all work together and then you take Charlie out they don't quite function as well in the first couple of seasons. It takes a little uh, first games of the season. It takes yeah. a little bit of time to get that continuity together, and I think we're starting to see them really flourish together yeah. now. Yeah, I agree, and I think even last year at times, like we having get, just getting added into that mix, pardon me, found it a little bit difficult because you know I'm trying to understand what Charlie likes and what Robbie likes and what those guys like. So same thing would would be for Jez. He'd be feeling that too. So. Now, once again, you know, Charlie hopefully comes back and hopefully I can get back in there too. And it's another mix. And now we've got to sort of, you know, gel again. And, and Rose is spending a bit more time in the midfield. So understanding those looks. So it, it definitely takes time. And I think as fans, you, you know, I'm a fan and I love footy too. And you can get a bit impatient with that sort of stuff. You just want to see the boys, you know, toddy marking everything and kicking everything. But sometimes it just takes a couple of weeks to iron out those kinks. Yes, very exciting. There's going to be uh, some selection pressure, that's for sure, <laughs> moving forward. And we know that we have uh, North Melbourne this weekend. Mm. So if we can get that done, then we go to Geelong, take on Geelong, and then we have Essendon. So really looking forward to the month ahead and, and what lies ahead there. I just want to quickly touch on before we move on. Travis mm. Boak played his 100th game at Adelaide Oval on Friday night out of a possible 102 games. I haven't even played 100 yet. He hasn't played 100. He's played 100 at Adelaide Oval out of a possible 102, which is just an outstanding he's, record. And he's won 60 and lost 40. He's not slowing down, is he, Rock? Like you've seen him, obviously, how professional he is. But he, he just doesn't look like he's slowing down. No, I'm really excited by what he can do and how yeah. good he can be. I, I thought he was best on ground last weekend. Uh, it's important that we touch on this as well. Lockie Jones is actually designing the Indigenous Guernsey this yeah. season, and he will reveal that on Sunday, yep. and, and we'll wear that in our next two games uh, when, once that gets revealed. So that's exciting for the football club. We've both had a look at it. Yeah, and it looks, looks very nice, and Jonesy's just got the, the, the brush out beautifully. But as we touched on with, with Gemma, it's it's pretty significant, and we love our, our heritage and culture here. So for Jonesy to be able to do that, I'm sure that means a lot to him. Yeah, it means a lot to him and so many people at the Port Adelaide Football Club. I think we'll just take a little short break because we have to do a little setup for uh, the Friday oh, no. night football brought to you by KFC. I think I may have won and Hammer may have won as well this week. So we'll get into that um, shortly. Now, before we get into Friday night footy brought to you by KFC, there is a couple of things that we just talked about off air. There's something yeah. that caught your eye this week that you want to bring up and yeah. uh, follow up with a question. Definitely, Rock. I, I wanted to 
just throw a big shout out there to Pep, obviously playing 100, but also just bringing out little Frankie. I thought that was really special, you know, something for his family. His mum's been over a little bit as well, which I know he's touched on, and that's that's pretty special to, to be able to do that with his family. How did you go playing with, with kids? Did you struggle or...? Uh, yeah, no, it was good. Um, you certainly lose a fair bit of sleep, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's for sure. So just finding the balance, and, and you know what it's like when you play, you, you're trying to find the balance between when yeah. you can sleep and when you can't. And mm. Kids certainly make that a little bit more difficult. So that's why I think Travis Spoke will play till he's 50, because he doesn't have any kids, and he can go home for a midday nap yeah. and, and sleep whenever he wants. And he's, as you said before, he's the ultimate professional. But uh, let's jump into uh, Friday night footy and... Brought to you by KFC. We spoke about it last week. It was the Fremantle North Melbourne game. Yeah. I think you took him for forty points. Mm-hmm. I took him for f- ten goals. I think, and Hammer was about fifteen goals. And so I was the winner. So the bet this week is going to be. <sighs> I'm already shaking my head. What do you got for me? A Sprite, the full oh, six hundred mil Sprite. I'm going to start I know the clock. This. this is TikTok, man. You, I didn't take you for a TikTok man. You know that I wouldn't have uh, come up with this, but the <laughs> brains Sully behind the scenes has come up with this. So. I'm going to start the timer. You've got to drink as much as you can in 30 seconds and then not burp. So I'll give you a couple of minutes as much after. As I can. Okay, but I can take a br- I don't have to skull. No, you don't I have can... to skull. you just got to drink as much as you can in 30 seconds. Okay. So I don't want you to just have a little no, sip. You've you got to have a feed and yeah. crack and, okay. and we'll see how we go. So take that lid off there, mate, and we will rip in as it just pops there. And the timer's away. So Orazio's just uh, lifted that Sprite bottle up and he's, he's given it a fair old chug. He's gone, or oh, maybe the neck out of it. Not a great deal. He's ten seconds in. You've got to, uh, you've got to get through most of that. I would have thought the six hundred mils. Oh, here it comes. He looks like he's already going to burp. I think he just swallowed a couple of burps. There'll be a fair bit of air in that belly at the moment. Up to the 20, 25 second mark. You've got another five seconds to get as much sprite in as you can. That's thirty seconds. So you can stop drinking that now. We're just going to keep a little eye on you to see if you can uh, burp. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's disgusting. You've just let one go straight into the microphone. (laughs) (laughs) I could not hold that. That is unbelievable. So you've got through about three quarters of that or three fifths of that Sprite and you couldn't (laughs) couldn't stop the air coming back up. That is, that's, you have a go with half of that. That is, that's hard to do. Far out. No, not a very good effort at all, actually. (laughs) That was, uh... Horrid in the end. You uh, you lasted about five seconds. Oh, well, after that's you. the challenge, man. I couldn't hold it. What do you want me after to do? After you finish, so we'll, uh, are you okay to continue? I am. Do you need Let's to take go. a little bit of time? No, no. We've got uh, we've got Collingwood Bulldogs this this Friday night, which I'm very excited about. Should be a good game. Who you who you tipping? You yeah. go first this time. I, yes. I think you should. Friday night football brought to you by KFC. I'm going to take the Western Bulldogs to bounce back this weekend yes. by 15 points. I think they were. They've been depleted. I think they'll get a few troops back this week, so yep. I think they'll improve a little bit. And I was a bit disappointed with how Collingwood went on the weekend. I know Richmond um, got a few players back, but mm. I thought they were a little bit disappointing uh, to, to go down the way they did. So I'm gonna. the Bulldogs need to get moving if they want to yeah. be there at the point end of the season. So I'm going to take them by 15 points. I agree. I agree with you, Rock. I think I'm going to take the Doggies too. And no Brody Grundy hurts the Pies. So I think the Doggies win by 23, a little bit more than you, but... Yeah, I think it's a battle of the midfields there, I think. Getting the bump back, hopefully, and those sorts of guys, Dunkley, they'll, they'll get on top there. Yeah, I think they will. Uh, so I've taken them by 15, you by 23. Yeah. So we will keep a close eye on that. Good luck with selection. Thank hopefully you, get through training tomorrow, and hopefully the coaches uh, come to you and say, look, we're going to play you this weekend. You've done it very tough. We're going <laughs> to bring you and Charlie back together. Down there for against North Melbourne at Hobart, one forty Adelaide time again. Make sure you tune into that. It should be a ripping game down there, and another four points is is uh, the carrot down there to go down and get that. So hopefully you can get up and get selected, mate. Fingers crossed, Rock. I'm going to mention the fifty seven you had in the sample just to see if that persuades him <laughs> a little bit. But we'll see how we go. So make sure you do. I will. Because I was ready to go and I had to come back and. Uh, I just want to touch on, mm. we, we weren't able to get to the questions again this week. We had a fair bit going on around AFLW signings and, and a lot going on at the footy club over the last couple of days. So if you want to get in touch, um, you know all the social channels, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We'd love to get the questions. Yep. We will we will make sure we'll get to them next week. Unfortunately, we haven't got to them the last couple of weeks, but send them through this week and we will get to them. Thanks, Rock. Have a great week. I feel like I'm going to burp again, mate. I need to get out of here. All right. Cut it off.